I wish I could make reaction videos, but I was born in 1956. I've heard all these songs. What could I possibly react to? Hey, Warpus Snappers. This is Brian at Abuma Reacts. Uh, the thumbnail tells you that this is episode six of the New York LA rivalry. Uh, and this artist, Luke, um, is actually from Miami. I call the series New York, L.A. instead of East Coast, West Coast because I don't have room on my thumbnail to do East Coast, West Coast. So um, this is East Coast. Actually, they call it uh, South Hip Hop as opposed to East Coast Hip Hop. Uh, Florida, Georgia, you know, Atlanta, Houston, New Orleans, uh, all those are referred to as uh, Southern Hip Hop. So technically, East Coast hip hop is New York. But uh, since Dre mentioned this guy Luke in the last episode, which was uh, Fuck With Dre Day, I thought uh, we'd let him respond. If you remember, Luke is the, uh, the guy in the song that got uh, bent over a car and fucked, and then um, Snoop um, rested his nuts on Luke's tonsils. Um, you know, I, I forgot to mention in the last one, I really like um, Snoop's delivery, uh, his rap style. Um, I've, been, I've been listening to so much, you know, anger and aggression that uh, when Snoop comes on, he says things just as bad as the aggressive songs, but he says it more um, like, um, like uh, you don't deserve a response from me. You're not important enough to deserve a response from me, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. That's, that's the vibe I get from him. Like he could care less, but he's going to let you know how he feels, uh, which was kind of refreshing from all the uh, Tim Dog, uh, Compton's most wanted uh, aggression that I'd been hearing. So um, before we get to uh, the video, um, Let's uh, set the stage about what's going on in 1993. So um, there's this uh, recording company called uh, Uptown Records. It's in New York. Uh, the CEO is called uh, Andre Harrell. And Andre Harrell hires this guy named Sean Combs. You know, puffy, but Sean Combs. And uh, Sean is an executive there, or works his way up to being an ex executive there. And he um, develops the career of Mary J. Blige, among others. And he gets um, a demo by this artist called Biggie Smalls. So he has Biggie Smalls come in, um, he signs him up, and he gets him a, uh, uh, a record on a song called, uh, no, on a, on a movie called Who's the Man? And the song is called Party and Bullshit. And it's well received. So they start work on what was to be um, the notorious B.I.G.'s uh, Ready to Die. So uh, while they're recording that, Andre Harrell is getting word from the parent company, MCA, that what they're hearing uh, from uh, notorious B.I.G. is too aggressive, uh, too profane, and they want Andre to tell Sean who's producing the album to, you know, tone it down. So Andre's between a rock and a hard place. He doesn't want to tell Sean to censor his artist, but, you know, he doesn't want to get in trouble with the, you know, the muckety mucks, the higher ups. So he has this plan. He knows that uh, Sean has been developing this uh, recording label on, uh, on the side called bad boy records. So, um, Andre, uh, probably to appease MCA, uh, fires Sean, lets uh, Notorious B.I.G. out of his contract. And he does this knowing that Sean will find some investing uh, partners for Bad Boy, and then he can sign Notorious B.I.G., uh, and, then, and they can uh, continue to work on Ready to Die unobstructed. And, th and that's what happened. Um, in the meantime, Tupac uh, has already released a couple of albums, 
and he is in L.A. filming Poetic Justice with uh, Janet Jackson, the movie Poet Poetic Justice. Uh, and I've heard two different stories about how he and Biggie meets. The first one is um, Tupac uh, really likes um, Party and Bullshit, uh, so he, he makes, uh, you know, uh, overtures to, you know, uh, Notorious B.I.G., I'd like to meet you. The other story I heard is that Notorious B.I.G. was in L.A. and uh, uh, found a drug dealer that uh, knew Tupac and, you know, got the invitation that way. Um, whatever. They went back to Tupac's place and, um, you know, had a little party, got to know each other, got to know each other, um, and they became friends. And they, um, they supported each other. They did some freestyling on stage together. They had uh, three three tracks, I think, they recorded together that were released after both of them had died. Um, and at one point, Biggie had asked Tupac to be his manager, uh, and Tupac said, "No, stay with uh, stay with Sean because he'll make you a star." Uh, so uh, later in the year, so so they're buddies. Later in the year. Um, uh, Tupac uh, is charged with uh, uh, sexual assault. He's in LA in a hotel and he has consensual sex with this woman uh, and she comes back for round two, I guess, and um, uh, she says uh, Tupac has some friends over, um, you know, like to offer her up to these guys and she says that they raped her. So uh, he gets charged with this assault, and that sets the stage for stuff that's going to go down in 1994. You know what I've discovered is these songs that I've been doing, they're kind of like just um, kindling. You know, it's smoldering um, on top of these logs, and it's the, um, the actions and the, and the songs that, that come out end of 94, all of 95, that really, you know, ignites this fire. So these have all just been kindling. They're setting the stage for, you know, uh, the, the big uh, bonfire. Uh, so uh, it's the middle of 93. Uh, Tupac has yet to have that incident up in LA. And this is when Luke comes out with this song in June. And uh, like I said, it's a response to um, Fuck With Dre Day. Um, I, I looked up Luke, and uh, he was in a group called Two Live Crew, and I remember that name. I couldn't remember what song, so I looked it up, and they did a song in 89 called Misa Horny, and I totally remember that song. It was very popular. Um, it was like, um, oh, Misa Horny, oh, Misa Horny, oh, Misa Horny, me love you a long time. It sounded just like that. Uh, <laughs> anyway. It was very popular. In fact, um, I would sing that phrase many times uh, that year. Uh, so, so that's Luke. He left Two Live Crew. He went solo. Uh, he uh, released a track called um, Faking Like Gangsters that Dre thought was directed at him. You know, it was about... Um, uh, fake gangsters like N.W.A. wanting to be stars. In fact, he called them gang stars, um, and they really didn't have any street cred. Uh, so Dre took offense at this, put Luke in a fuck with Dre day, uh, and then uh, this is Luke, Luke's response to that. Um, and it um, is up on the computer right now, so we're going to give it a listen. Uh, and this is called uh, Coward, Cowards in Compton. And let me get my... Let me get my earbuds, or this isn't going to work. This is normally where a, a normal reactor would um, edit, but I don't, I don't like to edit. Not, just, not because I don't like to actually do the edit, but when I watch reaction videos, I, I want to see everything from, from the minute they come on screen to the minute they leave screen. I don't want any edits. 
I want to know what they're doing at all times. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm never going to edit from when I say whippersnappers till I say bye. Um, you see me, you know, researching like I do and then stuff like this. Okay. So Luke, talk to us, Luke. Um, so, um, there's apparently no women in this, so there's no bitch and hoe, uh, but, uh, they're certainly, uh, doing the, the homophobic st stuff here. It seems like the, the biggest diss that you can give a black guy is, uh, m my dick's in your mouth, uh, or I'm fucking you in the ass, um, which seems kind of weird. You know, I, I know like, you know, uh, rape in general is an act of you know power and control not of not of lust so so i get that but it seems like you know if you got your dick in some guy's mouth or his ass you know doesn't that make you a little gay a little don't tell him i said that so this is just all about um uh, physical control so far. And he is just like, you know, go, go, go. I can't even take a breath. Uh, so this um, reference to World Wrecking, Wrecking Crew, um, I've read that uh, this is a, a, a group that Dre was in uh, before NWA, and apparently um, they, they dressed up, you know, like makeup and dresses, I guess. Uh, so that's what, he's, that's what he's referencing here, like as a put down. Um, so he's making reference to, uh, the, uh, the wardrobe that, uh, Dre, uh, wore in, um, Wrecking Crew. Um, and, uh, he is, um, he's not pulling any punches with this and he's, um, Let's go back to that. I want you to just take off that G string, baby. So, you know, everything in this is about gay. 
uh, he's making fun of them for um, lip gloss and wearing s- sequins on stage um, when he was in that previous band. And, um, you know, uh, getting dicks put in your mouth and dicks getting put in your ass. Um, yeah, so misogyny, homophobia. Um, what else have they got in their playbook? Because, you know, you look real crazy and you're going to be my whole maybe. I just don't like this nigga. Yo, Mike Francis is take these fuck niggas beat. Yeah, this is how we do. We take fuck niggas beat. Yo, better yet, fuck that shit, my nigga. Fuck that shit. Yo, my nigga, bring the real shit in. Get that old coochie shit out of here. So I, what they played there, I think, is um, uh, from Nothing But A G Thang. So they took their beat. I don't know how they get away with putting that on here. Um like as a sample without getting permission. And you know, Dre would never do that. Um, I don't know how that works. Verse two, motherfucker still hits you with the ill shit. Fuck with my nigga and your ass and get killed quick. What's the nigga, you ain't shit. Did a whole album about the niggas pulling your dick. I wreck your whole style. But shots at the ass, you niggas can't laugh. So don't try to flip the script, money grip. Got a tech on my hip. Put them in the mood to trip. And I'll take your folks, folks. Take a walk down death row. Them niggas get paid, bro. Cause that shit ain't nothing but soft town. Play bad, get knocked the fuck off, clown. I'll be on the DL scope. Catch a slipping, leave your motherfucking chest so That nigga changed gills like a 10 speed. Last album that nigga was against weed. Now he missed the chronic man. Get high, nigga, try to play bionic man. Act like you wanna be tough. And we gon' see who really get fucked, you fuck. Yeah, fuck ass nigga, let me tell you something. What you gonna be? You gonna be a real nigga or you gonna be a fraud nigga? You gonna be on weed or you ain't gonna be on weed? You gonna be a bruise next year? All right, what you gonna be on this fucking fucking year? Let me tell you something about a nigga, right? A real nigga is me. You looking at real nigga, nigga. Let me tell you something. Have you ever got head on stage, nigga? I can hear from your motherfucking hoe on stage. You let the bitch be in the audience because I'm gonna take that pussy. You old pussy ass, crunk ass nigga. Let me tell you something. Cowards and Compton get sprayed in day. Uh, so Dade is Dade County, where um, these guys are from. My ass nigga, you my bitch, bitch. Hell yeah. Luke Records would like to acknowledge that all references made in the previous work towards homosexuals does not reflect an anti-homosexual position <laughs> on our part. Our problem was with homosexuals by the name of Dr. Drain Sweet Dog. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Uh that was a uh, that was a, a nice disclaimer, although I didn't think it uh, makes up for all the homophobia and that. But like I said, the homophobic remarks uh, are, are all about power and control and humiliation, as opposed to you know let's get it on. Uh, doesn't make it any better, and I don't think that uh, they could get away with that today. In fact, I don't know how they get away with that then. Um, I guess. Um, people weren't as offended back then. Uh, and how did people ever hear this stuff? It's not like it was played on the radio. You'd have like, you know, four or five words um, with all the fucks and the cocks and the um, asses. Um, so maybe it was just word of mouth. People would buy, a, was it cassettes at that time or, or CDs? I don't remember. But someone would buy it and then just, you know, play it on the street. And then it would get popular and people go buy their own because, you know, there's no Spotify. This is this is radio and MTV only. And and songs like this never going to get airplay. So I don't know how these uh, songs became popular, except for word of mouth. What else could, could it be? Um, I don't I don't I don't think it was him uh, rapping on this all by himself. Uh, the, the guy who who did the long verse and and so fast that was impressive um and you know uh i like the beat but um it's you know so one note i still think tim dog is is the most clever um and dr dre comes in second but uh compton's most wanted is down there this song is down there 
I mean, sure, it's a it's a, it's a it's a harsh diss, which is what he wants to do. But you know, how many times can you get fucked in the ass, right? Okay, so that was Luke. Uh, then after this is when Tupac gets in trouble. And then uh, end of 94 and all of 95 is when um, uh, shit hits the fan. Uh, so that's going to be next episode. Like I said, I don't know what, what the song is going to be. Um, there's going to be some uh, uh, Bad Boy versus Death Row, some Biggie versus Tupac, because something happens at the end of 94 that uh makes them not friends makes them enemies um uh so that's when uh things are start are going to start to get dark um so until then uh thanks for tuning in if you enjoy this content uh like and subscribe and i will see you next time bye